So just give me one moment to set a timer because I have four minutes and three things to say in it. So I want to keep track of uh, how long I've got to make sure I fit them all in without talking too fast. So the first thing I want to talk about is a game that happened in Brighton in 1927, a massive game called Lobby Lud. And what happened with Lobby Lud was, in 1927, the Westminster Gazette had to come up with a way to deal with the fact that nobody bought newspapers on holiday. So they got one of their employees to go around to seaside towns, um, initially Brighton within the first couple of weeks, and wander around. And they printed descriptions of the employees and rough ideas about where they'd be. And if you came up to them with a copy of the Westminster Gazette and identified them and said, you are Lobby Lard, you would get money. That's where you are X and I claim my five pounds comes from. And it was massively, massively, enormously popular. Literally thousands of people came. The second time Lobby Lard was in Brighton, they put on special trains from Victoria to Brighton to deal with the number of people who would come. Um, 50,000 people came. The trains weren't enough to deal with it. People who looked a bit like Lobby Lard got trapped in telephone boxes, yelling out, I'm not him, I'm not him. It's one of the most successful real-life games ever played in terms of numbers. And that's the first thing I want to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is a game design concept, the magic circle, which a lot of you probably know. And the idea behind the magic circle is that games exist in a separate sort of plane of reality. When you're beginning to play a game, you, you step into it, you do all of the gamey stuff, and you step out of it, and everything that happened in the game goes, disappears away as if it had never had happened. I really dislike the idea of the magic circle as a game design concept because it's opposed to all of the things I love about games. When I think about games, I think about um, the friends I played with, the rivalries I took into the game, or the resentments or smugness I left, the, the way you, uh, someone's bumpy dining room table meant the cards lay funny. All of these little, very, very particular things to do with where I was, who I was with, what the place was like. And that brings me to the third thing that I'm going to talk about, which is Tiny Games, which is the project that we've been doing for the Brighton Digital Festival. A tiny game is something we've been playing with for a couple of years now, and the idea of a tiny game is that it's something where you can understand the rules in just a few sentences and then play it in a particular place. So maybe you're using pedestrians as playing pieces, looking over a balcony, and you pick a pedestrian each and race them to the end. Maybe you're hiding behind massive sundial stones. Maybe you're wandering around and dodging between trees. And the important thing about tiny games to me is not so much the... Um, swiftness of understanding, although that's, that's nice, it's a lot easier to design 50 games if they're only three sentences long. Um, it's to do with the fact that it comes as an opposition to the idea of the magic circle, that everything is embedded in the specific place. With Lobby Ludd, it mattered that it was played in Brighton, it mattered how people were wandering around. Lobby Ludd, the, the performer, made the mistake of going onto the pier once and then was essentially cornered, and he reports that he only managed to get off of the pier without being spotted by himself pretending he was looking for Lobby Ludd and stopping any sort of dark-haired five-foot-three men that he saw going, are you Lobby Ludd? And throwing off everyone else's suspicion so that he could eventually get off of the bottleneck. The place where you're playing something matters. So we're making an app version of Tiny Games where you go, there are five of us, we're in a pub, we're feeling a bit sulky, there's some steps nearby, and it suggests the best type of game to play for those circumstances, or whatever your circumstances are. It's not out yet, it'll be months, six weeks. And also, for the Digital Festival, we've got 12 games that we think work really well in Brighton. One of them's about pedestrian, one of them's about listening out to seagulls, and put them on big vinyl posters in the place where you'd play them, and stuck them on the ground. The, the place where you're playing a game matters, and for tiny games for the next month or so, it's Brighton. Four minutes and five seconds. Okay. <laughs>